as I'm sure you guys are aware, this last weekend was the Specialty Coffee Expo. This year it was held in Boston, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, I was not able to get there physically in person this year. I had my COVID test booked, I was looking at flights, I was looking at hotels, and things just did not pan out. So I'm really sad about that. I was looking forward to meeting some of the new friends I've made over the past couple of years. It just didn't pan out. However, that does not mean that I wasn't paying very close attention and I wanna share with you guys some of the most exciting highlights and some of the new products that were announced at this year's show. One of the most surprising, at least for myself, came completely out of left field, and this was a custom Lance Hedrick Edition Breville Dual Boiler. Apparently they've been working together on this for quite a few months, which is not surprising because it's not just a blingy exterior. There's actually a lot of functional changes in this, I guess, concept machine they've been working on. First thing is he's swapped out the vibratory pump that you find in most Brevilles with a rotary pump. And then he also put a flow control knob right on the front of the machine. So you can now actively control the flow, basically a straight from manufacturer Slayer mod on this dual boiler. And then he's also gone ahead and programmed the first programmable button to be a turbo shot, a six bar 51 gram turbo shot. And then the second button is a Olympia Cremina profile. And this system also has the ability to link up to Bluetooth scales, similar to the Decent, and do gravimetric dosing. So I don't really know what the intentions for this machine are, whether they're gonna actually roll out something similar or it was just a fun concept thing like you see auto manufacturers do all the time, but this was pretty cool and definitely drew a whole lot of attention for good reason. And Lance had a pretty good expo overall by the looks of it. Probably the biggest highlight being his rendition of Frozen. I think most people knew that Lance was a pretty serious beatboxer, but he's got a good set of pipes on him too. I definitely think that Lance Hendrick karaoke should be a staple in expos moving forward. One big announcement that I think most people saw coming was Seneso's entrance into a consumer level machine with their newly announced ES1. Now this is clearly a beautiful looking machine. It probably has exceptional build quality and it has a tablet sitting on top. And Seneso was ready for the, is this a decent copy questions. Lots of people were asking those on social media and they were making some pretty bold claims in response to those. But before we get there, let's talk about the machine itself. It has sort of a mechanical paddle on the top that allows you to cycle through the extraction as it goes or several menu items, or the machine can pull some intuitive automated shots as well with future programmability coming down the pipeline, such as an intelligent pre-infusion because it has pressure monitors inside the group head just like the Decent. So it will supposedly be able to intelligently tell when the puck is saturated enough and move on to the subsequent steps. Or you can simply use that paddle on the top of the machine to cycle through the three stages of the extraction that they have defined, being the pre-infusion, the infusion, or the ramp down. Again, each of those recipes, you can program in your flow rate or your pressure goals, um, and really customize in that way, and then of course save profiles into the machine. So it does seem extremely intuitive. That was definitely a common theme of the people who got some hands-on time with it. They said it's an extremely intuitive thing. A parallel that I cannot help but draw would be Apple versus Android. Android is generally way earlier to the party and very feature-rich and customizable, that being the decent. They've been around for a long time and they've learned a heck of a lot of stuff about flow profiling, pressure profiling, gravimetric dosing, and espresso extraction in general. They've got a huge head start, but they do have sort of a more grassroots feel to that product. Whereas Seneso is coming in here with a less feature rich product, but a very polished product. So I think that's a pretty fair comparison to give right now. Uh, seneso has got a lot of catching up to do, but what they have presented so far in the ES1 is clearly very polished and a very good user experience. Another really cool product to see at the expo in action was the Boss Tamper. It's a local Boston product and it's an automatic puck tamper. It is completely motorized and absolutely tiny. It's also wirelessly chargeable and seeing people's reactions to how well this thing worked was just hugely entertaining. So congrats on them for what I clearly think was a pretty successful expo. 
Next up, we had Baratza, which had a few kind of, I'd say, nicky nacky releases here and there. They had an AeroPress attachment for the Sete 270. They released some color kits for a few of their grinders, so you can customize if you're into that. And they also brought back or released some new single dose hoppers. Notably, there isn't one for the Sete 270, probably because that's a pretty lower tension grinder to start with. However, three kind of interesting releases out of Baratza. Probably the most controversial release of the week was before the expo, Weber coming out with a revolutionary new portafilter, a new take on the portafilter called the Unifilter. They have completely done away with espresso filter baskets with a one piece unibody design. And admittedly, it looks fantastic and it is an incredible piece of manufacturing. However, people on social media were not exactly buying the marketing that it was better for cleaning, better for extraction and really good for commercial use. And most importantly, that it justified the 400 US dollar asking price, which is, that's a tough thing to sell no matter how good the user experience is. However, they said, wait till the expo, get it in your hands. It's a completely different experience. And people did. Um, Chris just released a reel on this product, kind of showing it in action again with Lance Hedrick. So definitely check that out. And the judges at the expo seemed to agree with Weber because they won best new coffee accessory with the Unifilter. So controversy, success, overpriced gimmick. Let's discuss in the comments below because there is a whole lot of opinion surrounding that product. Speaking of award winners, some other notable ones are the Fellow Clara, the Roast L100 Roaster, and the Ember Mug 2. See, I'm not lying, the Ember Mugs are awesome. However, as far as winners go, there's undeniably one big one from the whole show, and that was Morgan Eckroth, also known as Morgan Drinks Coffee, taking home the US Barista Championship for 2022, coached again, by Mr. Lance Hedrick. So congratulations to you guys. Congratulations, Morgan. I absolutely love the way that she integrated in her huge audience into her routine. What she did was she shared her signature recipe so that people could make it at home and taste along with the judges as she did her routine. And she also live streamed all of her routines live for her Again, huge, huge audience to see. So that was really interesting. She did the social media sphere proud and just an awesome performance all around. So congratulations, Morgan. Congratulations, Lance. And that's it. That's my summary of the 2022 Expo. So I definitely hope to be there in person next year. If you guys are going to be there, I look forward to meeting you. But until then, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss the future ones. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.